After another $3 billion sale, Jeff Bezos has now sold more than $10.2 billion in stock this year. Bezos has fired another stock sale bazooka, this time for $3 billion, as part of his prearranged 10B 5-to-1 trading plan. The sale of stock brings his running total of stock sales just for 2020 to more than $10.2 billion, according to CNBC. Bezos still owns more than 53 million shares, currently valued around $170 billion, even after the sale. The acceleration in stock sales for Bezos could be due to a number of things. Bezos has claimed he needs to sell $1 billion in stock per year to fund his rocket company startup, Blue Origin. Bezos is the poster boy of what is wrong with America. The fact is that many of the options Bezos employs to expand Amazon are available to him only, because of the many areas his various companies engage in, this is the crux of growing antitrust talk. Only after it has wrecked communities leaving many Americans jobless and retail stores sitting as giant empty shells might short-sighted consumers finally see the heirs of their way. Amazon is bad for America. Apple and Amazon share an ugly truth and that is their strong ties to America's government has in many ways allowed them to create a persona or facade that far outshines reality. This allows each company in its own way to exploit us while masking the huge amount of income they pluck from our government on all levels. Years ago I made a video entitled, The Poison Apple, where I questioned how Apple remains the darling of so many Americans while stories continue to surface on how those they have contracted to make their products abuse their workers. This coupled with the widespread criticism for its environmental practices and tax avoidance schemes would have caused major damage to the corporate image of most companies resulting in large protest outside their offices and massive boycotts of their products. We should remember, Apple is a company that Fortune magazine has called the most admired company in the United States and in the world. This is a company that The Economist called a phenomena, and questioned if, it was a bubble, even years before its stock price soared. A while ago I had decided to again make a video about, tax dodging, Apple because the corporate tax rate is a topic currently very much in the news. The crux of that video was focused on the Paradise Papers that revealed the murky dealings by the world's largest corporation, helping it pay a mere 3.7% in corporate taxes in 2020. This is a fraction of the worldwide average and well below the 20% slated in our new tax bill. In the leaked documents, it detailed how Apple attempted to find different avenues at securing its worldwide profits, which accounted for roughly 55% of its total income in 2020. It is as if people are totally blind to the less tasty side of Apple that appeared in a 2006 report written on working conditions at factories in China where the contract manufacturers Foxconn and Inventec produced the iPod. The video stated that one complex of factories that assembles the iPod and other items had over 200,000 workers that lived and worked in the factory. Employees regularly worked more than 60 hours per week making around $100 per month and were required to pay for rent and food from the company. This generally amounted to a little over half of the workers' earnings. Add to the history of worker exploitation the fact that since Apple manufactures in China it creates few jobs in American. Is the typical Apple user so self-centered that they just don't care, or do they lust for the product so much that they bury and ignore their social conscience? These consumers are even willing to pay higher prices to lock themselves into a closed system tightly controlled by Apple. For a moment let us put aside Apple and explore some of Amazon's corporate tactics as well as some of the recent stories and the ever-growing political tilt of the Washington Post which is owned by Amazon's CEO Jeff Bezos. Lurking in the back of my mind is that it was the Washington Post and not a newspaper located in Alabama that broke the Roy Moore story which has turned many women against the Republican Party. Because of Amazon's strong ties with the government and what is often referred to as the deep state, we should be concerned about whether certain forces are making a concerted effort to shape public opinion. It must be noted many of these parties appear to be at war with our current president. This brings up the question of just how much of the Roy Moore story that has had huge ramifications across society is a coincidence or if a strong hidden agenda is at play. Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon has indeed had a good 2017 and in the last few weeks, he has claimed the title of the world's richest man. Among the goals of this online retail mogul is replacing workers with robots which his company will both build and market plus controlling one of the most influential news media giants in America, The Washington Post. 
This high flyer is also the head of Blue Origin, a company with big plans to pioneer the frontier of space. Last but far from least as Amazon's CEO Bezos ties this all together with Amazon Web Service or AWS. This is a cloud service which also collects data and has strong ties to the government. This means they know when you are sleeping, they know when you're awake, they know when you are bad or good. This all constitutes a great deal of power in the hands of one man. As to the common link these companies share, both receive and feed at the tit of our government and receive a great deal of American tax dollars. We should never forget that in America the government and schools use taxpayer money to buy countless numbers of Apple products produced in China adding to Apple's credibility and helping to carry tax evading Apple to the next level. While this is happening the United States Postal Service bends over backward to deliver Amazon products at a loss and the American government pays out billions to AWS for its services in collecting and storing data on American citizens. This money adds to Amazon's war chest and feeds its ability to continue exploiting the brick and mortar stores that line the streets of our communities. These are the real businesses that provide jobs to millions of Americans. All in all, it is a bit ironic that so many people are infatuated with these two companies that seem hell-bent on taking far more from us than they are willing to return. To us not so enamored with these two companies the fact is, we just don't get it. Jeff Bezos, the world's richest man, has made Amazon shareholders extremely wealthy and happy in recent years, but when it comes to Amazon's hundreds of thousands of employees, it's a different matter entirely. Trump was right to call Bezos out a while back. Jeff Bezos did not purchase the Washington Post in 2013 because he expected newspapers to make a lucrative resurgence. He purchased the long-trusted U.S. newspaper for the power it would ensure him in Washington and because it could be wielded as a propaganda mouthpiece to extend his ability to both shape and control public opinion. The fact is that many of the options Bezos employs to expand Amazon are available to him only because of the many areas his various companies engage in and this is the crux of growing antitrust talk. Enough of the pandering to a self-promoting company that exploits the retailers that line our streets. Bezos has hurt America enough and doesn't need CNN to finish us off. Almost as frightening as the concentrated power held by companies such as Facebook and Twitter is the fact Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon and the world's richest man, is the person who owns and controls the Washington Post. It is silly to think Jeff Bezos purchased the Washington Post in 2013 because he expected newspapers to make a lucrative resurgence. It is more likely he purchased the long-trusted U.S. newspaper for the power it would ensure him in Washington when wielded as a propaganda mouthpiece to extend his ability to both shape and control public opinion. During a walk on Easter I observed a United States Postal Service truck out doing its Sunday Amazon deliveries. This action should be scorned by all Americans. While Jeff Bezos would like the USPS to be a subsidiary of Amazon ready to do his bidding it is not. The USPS is a money-losing enterprise shored up by taxpayers. Sunday deliveries that favor Amazon over our small businesses are wrong but this is especially glaring during a time small businesses across America have been forced to close due to the pandemic. Even more objectionable is seeing this done on Easter when businesses normally close so people can be home with their families. Amazon is a company that both Trump on the right and Sanders on the far left have decried, this leaves me wondering why so many Americans continue to buy its goods. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.